G'day shooters, InfiRay offers a pair of third generation IE6 thermal spotting scopes, one at $4,400, the other at $3,900, and their performance makes them extremely tempting monoculars in that price bracket. The basic spec gives you a good idea of why they're good. They have large 640x512 pixel sensors, small 12 micron pixels, 25 millikelvins or less noise equivalent thermal difference, and a long lasting built in battery. By long lasting, I mean the battery's claimed six hours life is realistic, and even if you're using them hard, you'll still get four hours out of them and probably more. These units are solid, well designed, and give you very good optics. Value for money is certainly above average. The key differences between the two are the base magnification and the field of view. The IE6 Pro, and we're talking about version 3s for both of these, starts at a higher 2.9 by magnification, but has a narrower 8.8 .8 degree field of view. On the other hand, the IE6 Plus starts at a slightly lower 2 times magnification, but has the wider field of view at 12.5 degrees. In most situations, you'll appreciate the Plus's wider field of view. After all, a spotter is for finding things, and the wide field of view makes that task quicker and easier, particularly in big open paddocks. Still, the Pro's magnification makes targets that much clearer and easier to pick from other objects. It also brings with it longer detection range, so if distant targets are common in your hunting grounds, then probably the Pro is the one you're going to prefer. The Pro has another thing to justify its $500 higher price. A bigger 50mm lens compared to the 35mm in the E6 Plus. That's probably why the Pro has a slightly crisper image. This ensures better chances of confidently identifying targets, but the difference is most obvious in bad weather. Personally, I'd take the wider field of view of the Plus every day of the week. In practical use, it's the most important difference, and because of that, I reach for the Plus more than I reach for the Pro. I'll describe their image quality together because there's very little difference between the two of them. The low 25 millikelvin heat differentiation figure ensures cleaner distinction between heat signals. It adds clarity in fog and rain, and while the effectiveness of the E6s was certainly reduced in poor conditions, they provided more detail than I saw in the handful of other similarly priced thermals that I've tried. On one drizzly night, I picked up targets more than 1300 metres away, and I was confident to claim that they were kangaroos, based on their shape and their movement. In normal conditions at regular ranges, targets stand out very well in both E6s, and by mid-range thermal standards, the targets are pretty clearly identifiable. They're not so good that they make it easy for novices. One bloke I went out with spotted a pig a little way away, which turned out to be a deer a bit further away, before it finally revealed itself as a rabbit just 30 metres away. With thermals, you have to learn to look for the clues given by movement and behaviour. And if you're not impatient, you'll work it out pretty easily with these infrarays. The digital zoom increases the base optical magnification by two times and four times, making the plus a two times, four times and eight times scope, while the pro is close to three times, six times and 12 times. As usual, you get increasing pixelation as you go, but it's not that bad. Claimed detection ranges are over 1800 metres for the plus and almost 2600 metres for the pro, neither of which I could accurately test, but I can say they both picked up targets as far out as I ever needed them to and beyond. I certainly saw target-like heat signals as far away as 1500 metres. The five colour palettes are great. Infuray's very clear hot target palette, which is a white hot setting with maximum contrast, really makes targets pop out at you. The regular white hot and black hot are both quite clear and give a good overview of the landscape as well as the target. The red hot is still my pick for initial scanning and spotting, even if targets aren't as well defined. I like having the choice of all five palettes, and I reckon Infiray has each of them calibrated very well. You've also got clever design in the eye spotters, which are so easy to handle and use. Unless you've got very small hands, they'll fit neatly into your grip. The three main buttons are raised and responsive to finger pressure. The fourth button, which is mainly for powering on and off or sleeping, is operated by your little finger and has been designed accordingly, with a different feel requiring a softer touch. Someone thought that through. The wide rubber eye cup fits snugly and blocks incoming light. Focus takes only a moment to find. The menu is laid out for intuitive use. The Infuray app could still do with some development to make it function just more smoothly, and maybe it's just the way it works with an Apple device for me, 
but it does what it needs to do anyway. The connection to a remote screen happens quickly and reliably. The Pro is fractionally bigger than the Plus, being 202mm long as opposed to 188 Weights 500 grams for the Pro, 420 grams for the Plus. They're both billed as pocket sized, but they're at the top end of that scale. They just fit into my hunting jacket's largest pockets. There's not much you can criticise about these two infrared spotters. They work exactly as they should and provide image quality and features that are right up there for value in this price bracket. Sure, there's competition in this price range, but these ones are among the best. As I said, my pick of the third generation eye monoculars was the E6 Plus because of its wider field of view. And I'd save 500 bucks and do it happily. But if range is more important where you hunt, the E6 Pro is probably going to serve you better. Here's where you've got to be patient with thermals. It's a pig, said my mate. No, it's a deer, he said. No, it's a pig. Let's go get it. I had a look and I watched it move and it looked much more like a rabbit to me.